Hey, and welcome to the 26th episode of the CMX Games Design Cast. I am Dave. I'm Scott. And today we've got a lot to go over, and we'll try not to make it take too long. First of all, this is the first episode of Design Cast since we were funded. That's right. As of last Wednesday night, stepped over at Dave's uh, to go over some stuff, and we uh, were, what, I don't know, 42, 48, something like that, dollars away, and yeah. all of a sudden... Boom. It. <laughs> the rest of the evening became updating the, the page with the stretch goals and stuff like that. Yes, it did. Well, it feels like ancient history now. Yep. <laughs> Less than a week ago. Things move pretty fast. Oh, my God. But it was a really good feeling. Um, uh, it was amazing. Yeah, you know, nice to hit it, like, a, just a, a little over the halfway point of the campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to not have to agonize about that. Uh, uh, yes. It was going to happen. Um, like, we, we, everything told us we were going to get funded, but until you got <laughs> yeah. it, told, like, uh, Yeah, even that last packer. Where's that last packer going to oh, come yeah. from? <laughs> guys, no one just backed. Don't you want to be that person? Uh, yeah. So uh, that's awesome, and thank you. Yeah, thank you. We're very happy to be back, and we've actually since then moved on and hit two stretch goals already. Yep, the first stretch goal was our custom poor rock bits, so rather than black discs, we're going to have black little jagged rock things, uh, which will be pretty cool. It'll actually be slate gray. Uh, slate gray, oh. They won't be black. They'll be poor rock colored. Uh, and then the second one we hit was the company house, which became more exciting than it could have been. Because uh, originally our company houses were based off of, like, the most common early style company house, which basically when you made it into a little game piece, even though the third dimension would be quite a bit longer than a Monopoly house, it pretty much just looked like a Monopoly house. Uh, so I went through a bunch of pictures of company houses and tried to find something that would look more interesting and came across the Saltbox style house. Uh, Got a 2D outline and a 3D mock-up of that put together real quick. Quick as as I could, anyway. And, uh, yeah, I was really happy with it. It's much more interesting. So uh, I hope people are a little more excited about that than the, than the original version. Yeah, it's like two stories on the front, one story in the back, you know, so then the roof slopes up to a V, and then way down on the other side. I like the reverse of a mullet? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Oh, we wrote down the things we we're going to talk about now, and I can't read my handwriting because I'm so <laughs> tired because I haven't slept since like two months before the Kickstarter began. Um, posters. So people wanted posters, so we came up with uh, some posters that feature the box art, and we added them to the campaign page today as uh, add-ons. Had quite a few people pick them up actually today already. Yep. Yeah. Maybe a half dozen, something like that. So we'll yeah. see how that goes going forward. Yeah. So it'll be a nice addition to, to people's wallets. It's a nice, you know, nice piece of art. And uh, uh, maybe a little easier to frame than the uh, uh, uncut sheets, uh, even though I'm I'm partial to those. But, uh, you know, uh, to each their own. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be nice. I've uh, been running... More demos. Uh, the most recent one was at Pegasus. Um, was that on Saturday? Saturday, yep. Saturday, the most beautiful day we had in Madison, so it was a little bit slow. Uh, but people did show up. Uh, we got some games in. Um, reaction very positive. Everyone was really into it. It seems to be the... I don't, you, know, you don't want to expect that all the time, but it does seem to be kind of standard these days. <laughs> Good? Yeah, people have fun. Yeah. Um... So we'll be back there um, the Monday before the Kickstarter ends. So that's what I say. The ninth, yeah. Yep, the ninth, and we'll be at Onboard on June seventh. That's a Saturday afternoon. Hopefully, the weather is really terrible and people want to be inside playing board games with us. Uh, uh, meanwhile, we've also been working on the game a little bit when we've got time. Uh, Got sort of a short list of stuff going into the Kickstarter campaign we kind of knew we wanted to address. Um, 
one that comes up often just because it's like the one thing that Rado mentioned about the game is that the beginning was a little bit slow. Yep, so we've got a lot of questions about, well, what are you going to do about that? Um, and uh, so we sort of thought through that and, um, you know, okay, well, what tools do we have um, you know, to accelerate the game for um, people that, uh, you know, feel like they've, they've seen Arrow 1 enough uh, and they'd like to um, add more to it um, to help accelerate it or, or make it feel more different every time. Um, and so the things that we have are, are um, we have uh, local businesses and we have events. Um, so uh, uh, you know, right now the standard game is two uh, businesses per game, one in uh, uh, Era 1 that opens and one in Era 2, and then a 19th century event that occurs in Era 2 and a 20th century event that occurs in Era 3. Um, and so if you want to mix the game up a little bit, we can help you um, vary it by um, well, varying the number and um, uh, of businesses and events that occur. We already sort of had that idea going in for uh, making a game that's simpler to play, where, you know, you add these uh, local businesses um, and events, maybe a little more than a beginner player would want to uh, uh, process, you know, somebody who's more comfortable only with uh, something that's more on, you know, Catan level or Ticket to Ride level or something. Uh, so we were already thinking about basically saying, okay, you know, beginner game, don't play with uh, uh, businesses or events. So instead, we'll do the opposite for uh, people that want to do the opposite. <laughs> um, so we're going to add these tokens, at least this is the idea, uh, like 25mm uh, chipboard tokens that will have um, basically the put a local business into play icon on one side and a don't do anything with this industry tax space on the back side. So if you are a new player and you don't want to use the local business, you use that token to cover up the local business space on the track. If you're a veteran player or you just uh, want to jump right in and accelerate the game, you can take that local business side of that token and put it anywhere on the industry track you'd like and we'll have suggested placement probably. But So you could say, okay, after two Porok and Arrow 1, I want a business to come out. After six Porok and Arrow 1, I want another 19th century event to happen in this game. Uh, so we'll probably have uh, two more businesses and two more event tokens, one for each event, and then on the flip side they'll all be blank so that uh, a new player can cover up all of the business and event spaces on the board if they wanted to. And then maybe one with that has um, a different uh, end game space on it just for the uh, new players who want to play a shorter game. You could put the end game space in a new spot as well. Yeah, so I mean, those are things that like really change the feel and pace of the game uh, when they land. Um, so uh, you know, certainly, this is something that will, um, you know, I think people that um, want to add a little more complexity or pace to the game uh, will appreciate. So we think that's good. Um, one other thing that we've been working on since, um, and we really started actually testing this at Geekway. I think is a uh, just a new a new way that Shaft and Hoist houses work together. Um, it's strange. Um, you know, we tried to simplify them, and by doing so, we kind of disconnected the shift bonus and the placement options a little bit. Um, so we're actually making them a little more complicated, but we find that because we're really tying them together, and I'll go over it in a second people remember how they work more. Um, so so, Shaft houses really tie the room together. Yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, so um, a Shaft House and a Hoist House, the way we're going forward, probably, uh, are exactly identical if they're by themselves. So they're plus two shifts, place Porak on either side, they're built on. Plus two shifts, place Porak on either side, it's built on. However, uh, when they're built on the same hex or hex hexes that are adjacent to each other, instead of them being plus two, they make each other plus four. So now to get your shifts, you really have to focus on the placement of uh, the buildings as well, and that really helps people like wrap their brains around somehow um, the ability that they have also to place Porok using those buildings when they produce copper. Uh, it's pretty much been a huge success since we started testing it. Yep. 
yeah, the only thing was, you know, maybe some people prefer a different way of explaining how far apart they need to be, but um, certainly something that the rule book will have, you know, examples of and, um, you know, we'll work on the phrasing and things like that, but... Um, yeah, there's basically yeah. two versions. One is same hex or adjacent hex, and the other version is, well, if their two bonuses touch each other, then they power each other, basically. Yeah, so basically you have a big contiguous region of bonuses, and then they're all awesome. Yep. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, that really ties it together. I mean, basically you can say, okay, yeah, voice houses do the same thing, shaft houses do this, you know, as shaft houses do, but together they're awesome. They right? do something better, right. Um, whereas before it was just like, okay, voice houses are awesome, and they make shaft houses nearby awesome, um, and that unidirectional nature of it, like, um, seem to yeah. not stick in people's mind. Yeah, it's a big stumbling point. It's surprising, really, I thought, that it was. Um, but we've got a good solution, I think. So. Yeah. Uh, and then a couple things that we've been trying um, that we don't like, which is also good to find out. Uh, one, um, we just wanted to see what would happen uh, instead of triggering events, businesses, and era changes immediately during a player's turn, what if you waited till the end of the turn and then did it? Um, Sometimes, like, the beginning player, you know, will, will be taking their turn and, like, okay, they produce four rock, they've got, like, one or two shifts left, and uh, but they reveal the change era token. Okay, well, hold on, okay, we'll, we'll shift the arrows, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so the thing was, well, you know, then sometimes that really trips up your decision-making process, you know. Uh, Yes, for a new player, yes. Yes, for a new player. For me, it's like, as, as soon as we start play. shuffling, I'm like, oh, man, you know, I basically know, do I want to keep going or do I not, right? Uh, well, it also, like, it affects your planning going into your turn and that, like, knowing you're going to be able to trigger an era and stuff like that. Yeah, it sort of feels like you can benefit yourself by triggering the next era rather than only being able to benefit your opponent. Or, I mean, it's not quite that simple, but, um, you know, that's, it was a thought process that we... Uh, heard while playing with the alternative version, with the end of turn version. Uh, plus, with the end of turn version, it is much, much easier to forget to do something. Yeah. Um, not the errors, maybe so much because that. I think I don't know. Maybe you could forget those too. I guess, but good. Uh, like businesses and events, especially, like people would forget um, if they were waiting to the end of their turn because. Yeah. yeah. We we would almost forget, and. If we're almost forgetting this. We're almost forgetting, that's bad, yeah. Uh, what else did I write? We had one other thing. Oh, claims. Claims is the last thing. So this has been a thing. Like, um, When you take a claim, you've got to complete it. So whether or not to take a claim is a decision that you need to make when that card comes up and is claimable. Uh, and for a new player, this can be tough. Uh, because they don't know necessarily what they should claim or at what point in the game they should claim it. Um, you know, a new player flips up a uh, barrel copper in era one and it's not their spec and they don't have either resource and they claim that card. And then they're sitting there in era three and they still have it. Um, so we've tried uh, a couple versions. This one, like... Um, letting people complete claim by discarding it instead of completing it, but that's clunky and I don't, we don't like it. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do it. I mean, maybe once. Yeah. Uh, it's just unnecessary rules-wise. Um, and the other version is just to let people discard them all the time. And If you're learning to play the game, maybe that's a thing you can do. Um, that might end up being like a, one of those sort of new player caveats. Like, you know, if you take a claim and you're, you guys are playing a learning game, like, go ahead and discard them if you realize that that was a bad idea. Um, yeah, we definitely tried several games where we did that, and it felt like there was just, like, there was an auto decision almost all the time. Yeah, it's like, just claim it hard if it's better. Claim it. Okay, claim it, claim it, claim it, claim it, claim it. And it breaks things in Era 3 also when you get the natives. Yeah, that's true. Yes, some of the poor rock placement uh, decision making is just yeah. Yep. Oh, I'll just claim that instead. I don't have to place. Um. So yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Funded. Two stretch goals down. Posters are up. More demo days. 
and all kinds of gameplay stuff we're working on. Well, not all kinds, but uh, four little things I think are all good. Two that we like and two that we decided not to pursue anymore. So, a week and a couple days left. Uh, yes, yeah, we're hoping. Hopefully, when I try to hit this current stretch goal by Sunday, so that we're sitting on shaft and shaft houses and miners and the board going into the final couple days. Yep. Let's see if we can do that. So tell everybody. <laughs> That's right. Buy some posters too. Yeah, that'll help a little bit. All right, uh, so, wow, will we be, no, we won't be done, but we'll have a couple of days left. Yep. The next design cast. We'll try to get it in on time, actually, next week. <laughs> yep. All right, yeah, we'll be back next week uh, for our final design cast before the end of Kickstarter. Number 27. Number 27, yep. See ya. Yep.